guilty. <laughs> What's going on there, YouTube? This is SEO 0320 Zing JVS. I'm back here again for another review for Gotham. Third season. This is episode number. Episode nine. Good gracious. The, the Mad City, the Executioner. This is basically episode where Barnes' character just unravels. I I actually didn't like this episode. <laughs> As much as I would have liked. I think my problem was I went on uh, Facebook and I saw Michael Chiffis up there. He was basically kind of like pushing the episode that everybody should check it out. This is a defining episode and the metamorphosis of his character and what they're going to do moving forward. In addition to that, like wait until the very end, you'll get to know what kind of character he is. They said that his character is not, I guess, the judge. It's not Judge Dredd. It's not whatever, you know, that this is the authentic character they're building. And, I mean, for lack of a better word, I mean, his expression and his zeal and stuff like that while he was in this character, like, changing, I'm all for that. I think the problem that I had is at a certain point, um, after he pushed out the guy out of the window from the last episode, his face stopped altering and changing. Like, he was just changed. So, it was like, I, I, I assumed that he still had super strength, but I really didn't know. So the, the, the question that begs me is that, okay, after a certain point, does the super strength wear off and then the person's subconscious has just completely changed? Because honestly, I mean, they do have him in those like those locks and stuff like that. So he must be still super strong. As a matter of fact, he, he hurt Jim pretty bad. And he can still, you know, walk and run. He was actually pretty fast. How he caught up with Jim didn't make sense to me. But anyway, I'm not disrupting Michael Chiffa's character. I think that him dealing with the duality complex i think that that's one thing about this show is that they they pitfall people into their villainous versus having somebody that's always in and out i think the only person they think they've got that right with nah at first enigma he went too quick to heal i think penguin but penguin the problem with penguin is he's always been evil it's just there's moments where he has good sides about him um, this episode, like I said, it was really all about Michael Chiklis' character. And I think that, you know what I'm saying, Ben McKenzie as Jim Gordon, he is phenomenal. Like, I don't really give him enough credit because the thing is, from seeing where he started to him, like, just going down this dark path, and then finally, he's getting his footing. He's finally getting to a point where, you know what I'm saying, he's getting where he needs to be and being who he needs to be the Jim Gordon that we know him to be and matter of fact like now like the commissioner's chair is like almost like a curse and it's like he's being groomed into that he's being fashioned I think that's one of the assets of this show um so Ivy is back in this episode and again like I said they rushing uh certain characters in certain ways that to me I mean I just, it didn't make sense um because I understood that Ivy was kind of like working with these men and like, you know, like letting them use it. I didn't know to what capacity. I feel like she wasn't going to use her body because that's just not how she was before. It didn't make sense. So I'm glad that they explained that, you know. But at the same time, um, for her to know how to concoct certain plants that would cause these kind of sedatives and this kind of disruption and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? The thing is with Pamela Isley, she was a medical practice doctor. Like... And Ivy of this caliber right here is not smart at all. So I don't really know what interpretation they're using for her. But maybe she can grow into that because she's still technically a child at heart. Maybe she can actually go to school and start to really learn these. Because she really does have a passion for it. For her to know that is actually really interesting. Um, her relation with, um, <laughs> with Selena was really interesting. But it interfered with the stuff that her and Bruce is going on. That, and that's the thing about, you know, these last three episodes. Uh, as good as the last three episodes have been, this probably being the least, is that they're adding a lot of drama just for the heck of drama. Uh, case in point, Nigma and um, Penguin. Because, I mean, for Miss Kringle to get killed, Joe was pissed about that, by the way. Joe was upset. He's like, how are you going to bring this chick back just to kill her all over again? And, like, if you look at her body, half of her face is scarred off. Is she going to be the new, you know, Two-Face? I, I don't know. Um, but it was, like, it was adding drama just to add drama. I was like, this didn't have to... The, their um, sexual tension between Ed and, you know, um, Cobblepot 
didn't have to be, in my personal opinion. I, I think that they could have dealt with their own concept of how they deal with stuff. Because Nygma can be a psychopath, just straight killer. And so can, you know, Penguin. But it's like they they got different levels of that. And like now those lines are blurred because there's so much melodrama in the backfold. Um, and then the same thing kind of like with adding in, you know what I'm saying, um, Poison Ivy with Bruce and Selena. It's like, I mean, she's kind of shoehorned into it and it makes me not care about Pamela Isley or, you know what I'm saying, what they're going to do with her. So I don't really know, man. I think that... It's going to be interesting to see what they do with Ivy long term, but they need to give her her own footing. She doesn't need to just keep on relying on Selena, even though Selena is a defining friend for her. Um, I don't know. I, I, I just I think I'd give this episode a 7 or a 7.5 out of 10, somewhere in the middle of there, because there was different moments that I was like, okay, cool. But then when I looked at Ed, like, come to find out like what he thinks is the... I don't know if he's playing or if he's just that hurt and naive, because... For him not to get it, it didn't make sense, you know? I mean, it's going to be a payoff later on, but it's like, did that need to happen? Because eventually their ideals and their perspective of how things are supposed to be are going to change, you know? Like, Nygma's not going to stay devoted to him. There can't be two number ones. And Nygma is not a backup. Like, he can do it all by himself. So, I, I thought that that was going to happen anyway. They don't need to have, like, this star-crossed lover kind of situation and it's like, I don't know, I, any of y'all miss Fish Moon? <laughs> but anyway, I, I, like I said, I love the show. I just thought this was kind of a weaker one. And I think that they could have done so much more with Barnes if they would have allowed this kind of push and pull with him dealing with the process of virus. I never saw the virus, like, kind of come out, you know? I never saw those outbursts. Like, I thought that he was going to explode in this episode. That's what I thought was going to happen. I think my expectations were a little too high. Um, but hopefully y'all did enjoy the episode and leave it in the comment section below what y'all thought about it. I'm about to go check out this Beauty and the Beast uh, trailer real quick. And then, um, what else am I going to do? Crap. I'm going to go see The Robber tonight at 10.30. Keep it locked. JVS, we're going to stop. Peace, everybody.